Hello and welcome to a new video on MQL5 and neural networks. Today we are going to be implementing a cool new neural network that allows for various dimension of input and also uses the atom optimizer. In my previous videos I've used neural networks but they've been with specific dimensions and they only allow for regular gradient descent. This is a huge step forward and allows for faster optimization and more customization. So in my, uh, in my script here, I've, I've used hashtag include mathstat normal. This is the normal distribution. This is the only include that I use. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to say that the class neural network uh, is basically, here are the private variables. So the private variables, if you want to sit down and copy all those, I commend you. But a lot of the source code is going to be on GitHub, so you don't have to copy all this down from the screen. Uh, check the link uh, in the description for the GitHub. Um, here are my public variables. These are the more, more interesting ones. Uh, here's weight one, weight two. Um, here's the constructor that takes the in dimensions row, in dimensions column, number of neurons deep, out dimension alpha, and uh, the learning rate. We have a train function which takes an input and the correct Y matrix. We have the sinum function and we have the prediction function, right, that allows us to predict with our neural network. So very easily, um, we are going to start with a constructor. Here we have some private member variables and we're going to set those to the input variables that we have in the constructor. Uh, we are going to fill, uh, we're, sorry, we're going to construct random matrices with the dimensions that we need from these uh, variables right here. And then we're going to fill them with random va uh, values. And then we're going to set weight one and weight two equal to those uh, random weight matrices. Now you may ask, how is it that I can use this matrix random function? Well, this is something that I've constructed myself personally. Um, basically, I loop through every single element in the matrix and I set it to a, I set the value equal to a normal, random normal variable. Uh, so with mu zero and standard deviation one, which is very, very nice. Okay. And so when we go to forward propagation, um, we also have matrix sigmoid, but I'm getting too far, far ahead of myself. So let's talk about forward propagation. So forward propagation, we have the input matrix. Um, we set m underscore input equals to input and then we do matrix multiplication on that with weight 1 and then we activate we use the activation function on that matrix to get the next matrix and then we multiply that matrix with weight 2 and then we do the activation matrix uh, activation function on that matrix so how do we do the activation function on that matrix well it's very very similar to the random Instead, we just take each element and apply the sigmoid function, okay? And we can do that with the sigmoid prime. Now, what's the sigmoid function and the sigmoid prime function? These are the activation functions. So we have one divided by one plus e to the negative x, and then e to the x divided by power uh, one plus e to the negative x comma two, so the bottom is raised to the, is squared. And this is from calculus. So if, if you know any calculus, you would take the derivative of this function and you would get this function right here. All right, so let's see what we can do next. Uh, we have that, so let's talk about um, the, uh, the computing the derivatives. So we want a, a cost function. Uh, so let's look at this right here. So we have the x is, is the input and the y is the y in, uh, underscore input or y underscore. So we get y hat, so we do the forward propagation and we calculate the cost of this uh, function and then we basically do back propagation, right? So um, we basically take the uh, sigmoid prime this time of this matrix and we basically multiply it with the cost function then we do uh, m underscore a underscore two dot transpose 
and matrix multiply it with delta 3. And that gives us the, sec the derivative of weight 2. Then we just do the same thing with weight 1, and we get the derivative with weight 1. So that's very, very cool. Um, this, uh, compute, this, this compute derivative is the cost function prime. Uh, we also need to calculate the, uh, the cost function, which is right here. So the cost function, we take the input and we take y and equal to y underscore. We calculate the forward propagation. We have a temporary matrix of y minus uh, m underscore hat. And we basically sum every element in the matrix and divide it by the columns divided by the rows, which is kind of like the average. And then we square that value and then we multiply uh, that value by 0.5, which is really, really, really nice. And there are tons of cost functions out there, like logistic, whatever, um, but I chose to use this one. So lastly, we get to the creme de la creme. We get to the train matrix. So train input, uh, here's the correct values. Uh, we set y underscore correct equal to the correct value. We set a bool train condition equals true. We have a number of iterations. M underscore hat is forward propagation. We compute the derivatives. And then we add these uh, temporary uh, mt underscore ones and temp mt underscore two that are the same size as weight one and weight two. Um, and we begin the train. So this is the training loop. So while the training condition is true and iterations is less than 600, we're going to do a forward propagation. We're gonna compute the cost function. And if the cost function is less than um, alpha, uh, m underscore alpha, that's the threshold that we set, the training condition is going to equal false. Um, while we're in the training loop, we're going to set beta equals to 0.9, and we're going to have two uh, kind of um, two kind of updates. So m t underscore one equals beta times m underscore one plus uh, one minus beta times the first derivative of weight one, and we do that with also weight uh, the derivative of weight two, and then we basically can uh, update the learning rate, uh, sorry, we can update um, this, uh, this this gradient descent algorithm right here. So weight one equals weight one underscore one minus the learning rate uh, times beta times mt underscore one. So this is kind of the item optimizer and it's very, very effective and it's very, very beautiful. Um, I personally really enjoyed implementing this algorithm. It works a little bit better than just regular gradient descent. Um, regular gradient descent does work, but it's very slow and it has some other problems that are just too deep to explain here. So, yeah, I mean, this was a lot of fun. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything that I didn't uh, didn't do. Okay, so. Once you have that, then we come over here to uh, the neural network tester, and here is the. Uh, um, well, that's that's extra. You can you can implement that if you want, um, but I just did this on the init function, and here's the matrix X. Here's the correct matrix. It's a one hot vector. Here's the matrix Y. It's got some values, um, and it's going to predict. And then here is some. Here's a second matrix X2, and it's going to has some values and it has a one hot vector, and you throw it into the training loop, and then you have Y uh, underscore Y2 and it has some values, and then you basically use that to predict uh, the prediction. So uh, let's run this and see what happens. Um, as you can see. Um, what we have here is the uh, the prediction, and we had 37 iterations on the first one, and 135 on the second one. Sometimes you can do a bit better than that. Let's, let me recompile. Um, here we had 23 iterations and one iteration. That's not always the best to have just one iteration. Um, 
but here's here's a really good one. Here, we had 15 iterations and then 31 iterations. Now, if I basically did this with just the uh, the regular gradient descent algorithm and not the atoms optimizer, it would be a lot slower. It would take uh, a lot less. Uh, so it would take a lot more time to compute. But um, you can also basically set um, a threshold for the number of iterations in the training loop to prevent that kind of thing. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoyed coding this neural network. Um, if you enjoyed the video, uh, like, share, and subscribe, and uh, have a nice day.